How's it going guys? Uh, Porik here. Um, I am doing a video for you guys on axe maintenance. Uh, knives and Tools have asked me to do a series of videos uh, to help you guys stay sane while you're stuck at home. Uh, maybe you guys need projects to be working on, losing your mind, not being able to get out to the woods and you know what can we be working on while we're, while we're stuck at home. And obviously one of the easiest ones is tool maintenance. Um, so today, what we're going to look at, I found this old, uh, well it's not old, but it's a, it's a little wetlings hatchet. Um, it's not very well hung, but it's got a fairly bad edge on it, so I thought it would be a pretty good example of uh, how to bring a pretty bad edge back to a, to a I suppose, razor sharp uh, edge. So we're going to look at some of my ways that I sharpen my tools and um, some techniques and some options and then we'll decide which is the best for something like this. So let me bring you over here and I will show you some of the ways uh, that I uh, sharpen my tools. So. so let's have a look at some of the, the, uh, the ways in which I sharpen my tools and maybe explore the advantages and disadvantages of some of them. Um, so the first one we have here in the center is the Langsy sharpening system. I'm sure many of you guys would be familiar with this. Um, but essentially, it's quite a simple way of working. Um, it comes with a series of different stones of different of various grits from very fine to very coarse. And you can buy other ones afterwards, um, depending on the types of tools that you are trying to sharpen. So maybe a a pocket knife, for example, that is a uh, very particularly hard steel, like maybe uh, like M390, for example, you might want to use. I bought this after I got the set. This is a sapphire stone and it's very fine. It's also very hard. And it's a good way of sharpening um, some steels with some, some harder HRCs. Um, but it's a, it's a really good system because um, you can get a very precise and accurate, um, well, arguably accurate, um, angling system depending on which of these you use so the way it would work with that the knife cl clip in here you would choose a stone and it clips onto one of these and then you can choose which angle so for example let's say we wanted a 25 degree angle it would go here and then you can get quite a consistent um angle across your knife's edge and um, so great system i love using this and um, not particularly good for uh, bigger knives um, but for a standard kind of four inch bushcraft kind of blade it works really well so I love this system and I love that I can modulate and upgrade it and upgrade the stones as I need and um, so I'll just move this out of the way for a second then the next one I suppose what we have here is um this one is looking a bit banged up but this is a Japanese water stone and um, I think the name of this company is um, is it ice uh, I can't remember the exact name of the company that makes these, but these are traditional stones. They get soaked in water. This is a kind of a coarse side and this is a very fine side. The, grit, the grits on these are ridiculously fine. Perfect for, let's say, a just uh, like a spoon carving knife, for example, where you need a really, really fine, sharp edge. And um, so this just gets soaked in water um, and then you can use this stone. The disadvantage of the stone is that, well, A, it's quite bulky and heavy, so it's not something that you'd necessarily carry into the field with you um, and B they get worn away eventually and if you don't look after them properly you can wear it on one side and um, so they need to be kind of kept flat and um, and maintained in order for them to work properly but I love the whetstone the Japanese whetstone for my carving tools and my carving knives so it's a fantastic way of sharpening you can also use this um, to sharpen an axe and maybe we'll go through that a little bit later just as an example of how this could be used to sharpen an axe if you really wanted to um, and then staying on stones I suppose we have over here we have some Spyderco stones and um, this is the Spyderco Double Stuff and this is the Spyderco Double Stuff 2. Spyderco Double Stuff 2 just came out and it's made a couple of changes and we'll go through those in a second um, but the original Spyderco Double Stuff I really love this stone this is a ceramic stone so you've got a medium grit stone on the back and a, and a super fine on the other side. This is really good for sharpening um, most steels because it's ceramic. You can get away with sharpening quite hard steels with this and you're gonna get a really nice edge to move onto your strop with on this. And it's also transport, transportable, very light, and very uh, easy to keep in your 
pocket or in your sharpening system which in the field and it goes in this slip case which uh, is made of suede that can be doubled as a um, a strop if you really wanted to. I have personally never done it but I've heard of people that do. Um, and the new Spyderco Double Stuff 2 is slightly different in the sense that I think this side is the same as the original except on this new side now they have a what's called CBN or cubic boron nitrate. It's very very um, coarse. It actually feels not very nice to touch. Um, super coarse. Um, this is very similar to what you might find on, on a diamond coated um, sharpening system. So completely different grits than on this. The original spider cut double stub has quite a, um, not a huge difference in grits, but definitely enough for you to get uh, a really good working edge. Whereas this feels like something that you would use for getting really bad dings or nicks out of your tools. So in some ways this might actually be a better tool to have with you for an ax over the original spider cut double stuff. Um, it also, if you can see here, it has, um, they're slightly offset and there's almost like an extra bit sticking off. The reason they have that is it's for serrated knives. So if you have a knife with serrations, you can get into the edges, you can get into them and you can actually sharpen them. Um, so fantastic tools, not the cheapest thing in the world, but if I, I, if I was to recommend anything, I would say get yourself, if you can, an original spider cut double stuff. They're fantastic tools. I haven't tried this one out yet, so I can't talk to it much. Um, but if it's any as good as the quality of the original, then I, I don't imagine it would be um, anything but just as good. So park those to the side. Um, next thing we can look at is, um, well, there's a couple of stones here. These are just very bog standard. This is a, a puck. Um, traditionally used to sharpen axes. Again, you've got a fine side and you've got a grittier side. We probably will end up using this today. Um, judging by the edge on on this Wetherlings axe here, it probably will need a bit of a puck thing, but we'll go through that. Um, but essentially that, and then this is the standard kind of thing you would find. I actually just found this here in the workshop. Um, it looks like it's been used quite a bit. It's a uh, it's fairly rough. It's probably it's probably been used for chisels and things. By no means are you ever going to get a, a sharp edge using these kind of tools. You really have to invest in. Well, sometimes you have to invest, but um, if you want to get like super fine edges on your tools, something that you find in your local hardware shop like this is probably not going to cut the mustard. Let's be honest. Um, but this this could be this could bring you up to a reasonable edge, and we'll go through that later on. Um, and then we have a file, you know, a standard, it's called a bastard file. Um, this again is for mainly for axe use if you're trying to get really bad dings out um, and you would be, you would go down along the edge of the blade. Um, and again, we might go, we might go over that later on. Um, but yeah, so again, another way of sharpening tools. Then we've got your standard uh, wet and dry sandpaper. This is the kind of stuff that you would find in your local hardware shop or maybe in your local, um, somewhere where maybe they, you can get, you get your windscreen wipers and things like, like your local Halfords or somewhere like that because these, um, the wet and dry stuff is also used for cars and for getting paint and things off cars. Um, this isn't your standard wet and, uh, this isn't your standard, um, sandpaper that maybe you would get for taking paint off your walls. This is specifically wet and dry, so there is a difference. And um, this is used for metal, not for wood. Um, this is 600 grit. Um, again, I love wet and dry sandpaper for a number of reasons. It's very light, very transportable, um, very cheap. You can get really, really, really fine grits up to like six, 7,000 grit. Um, if you kind of shop online, you get some good stuff. Um, it's also, um, the materials that they use on the sandpaper is hard enough that you can actually uh, sharpen quite hard steels uh, using wet and dry sandpaper. So I'd highly recommend getting yourself a bit of wet and dry sandpaper um, and learning how to use it if you want to sharpen your tools um, in the field. Another advantage of it would be that for, let's say a convex edged uh, knife, that requires a slightly softer surface under it. What you can do is you can actually get like a mouse mat. Actually, I might even have one. Uh, so this is a mouse mat that, you know, from your old computer days, I'm sure 
people still have these lying around, but it's it's a soft, spongy, foamy surface. And this is perfect for uh, maintaining convex edged knives because um, convex edge needs a bit of give. It can't be on a really hard surface. If you have it on a really hard surface, you're eventually gonna wear down that edge. But if you have something with a semi-soft surface, you can get a piece of this on there. Uh, maybe something a little bit bigger than this, you can tape it down. Actually, it would probably make more sense to do it on this side, for example, or on the edge of your table. Tape that down while it's wet, and you can actually maintain your convex edge on that. Um, so wet and dry sandpaper, fantastic. Look into it. Next thing we have is Arkansas Stones. And these are Knives and Tools' own brand, Skerper. Uh, really, really fantastic little tools. Arkansas Stones have been around for a very long time. There's evidence and suggestions that the Romans used them to sharpen their uh, their tools, their knives, and their swords. Um, it's it's a it's a natural material. It's cut from the earth. It's not made in a factory or any sort of compound. These are actually genuine stones that have been cut from the earth. Um, so there's something kind of, for me at least, something kind of romantic and beautiful in that. Um, the downside of these is that because they're cut from the earth, it's very difficult to actually grade them in terms of very specific grits, like you would have with sandpaper where it's like a 600 or an 800. Um, so these can only be kind of estimated as to what kind of grits they are. So this would be, um, this is a surgical black. So very, very smooth. Um, so I would attribute that to something like a, I don't know, maybe a 2000, 3000 grit. But again, it's just an estimation. Um, the downside of these is that because they're not particularly hard, they're, they're earth stone, then some of the steels, some of the more modern steels that you'll find out there for knives are never gonna um, be, a, you're never gonna be able to sharpen them with these because they're just simply not hard enough um, to actually cut and remove material from the knife. Um, the upside of them, super light, super compact. You can have, aside from these little cases, and um, which arguably, sorry guys, knives and tools, but they are a little bit big. If they were slightly smaller, you could carry a whole set of these in your system um, for next to no weight. I mean, they're, they're quite light. Um, I love these stones, and I think we're actually gonna use these today to sharpen the ax because this is a hand-forged ax, and the steel is not gonna be super hard. It's probably like a car, like a, just a, a high carbon steel, and um, nothing too fancy about it. Just a, a working steel, and so I don't think that the uh, Arkansas stones are going to have any problem um, removing material from this from this axe. And then finally, we have uh, just whoa, once all that's done, we'll be stropping. So this is just a simple old leather strop. Again, it's from Skerper. And uh, fantastic stuff. You, again, I'm not biased, but <laughs> you should go on to Lines and Tools and check out the Skerper range because I think they're really high quality um, and really good tools. So this is a Skerper, uh, just a s simple leather strop. On one side, we've got this kind of rough side. It's kind of a, it's the back side of the leather. So it's quite rough. It takes on material much easier. And then on the back, we've got more of a softer kind of smooth side. And I tend not to put anything on this, any compound or anything like that, because I actually just finish off my blades with a couple of licks on the on this side. Um, but what I would normally put on this would be either a stropping compound. So this is just, uh, this is just blue uh, compound, or I think some people call it Smurf poo. Um, but this is, you know, you would rub it on there. The only disadvantage is that it just tends to clog up your your your, um, your strap a lot easier, a lot quicker rather than, let's say this. So this is Tormek paste, and um, which is just it's just like a a paste that turns to powder when we rub it on this. We'll do some later, and you can see, um, and. I find this much better and the advantage as well is it's a lot easier to clean than this stuff that tends to get a bit waxy. So there are all the uh, the kind of sh the ways that I use to sharpen. Um, I think today, looking at this axe, what we're going to do is we're going to take, I might, because as I said, there are, it is very, very rough. What I might do is first of all, maybe get this puck on the fine side. I mean, it is. It says fine, but it's not. It's it's not particularly fine. I'll show you guys how to use the puck and the rolling technique. 
Then what I think we're going to do is we're going to take these Arkansas stones, Arkansas stones and we're going to work our way up through these uh, grits and hopefully um, then at the end get ourselves on the strop and if all goes well we'll have ourselves a very sharp axe by the end of this. So let's move over to the vise, we'll throw the axe up and, uh, and we'll start working on it. So I've put my axe here in the vise. Um, this isn't necessary having a vise, I've just put it in here simply for the sake of this video because it's just easier to uh, to work with while uh, while the camera's rolling. Um, I've also just put a t-shirt here because I don't have a soft um, kind of grip on the inside here so just to protect the wood off the axe I put a t-shirt in. Um, but as you can see I mean it's, I don't know if you can see it there but it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty rough edge. Um, so I think the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this um, this puck and we're going to I'm going to show you how to um, get the initial uh, kind of thing going so I'm actually going to put some oil on this um, you can use oil you can use water um, I've seen some people spit on theirs spit apparently works um, just be careful if you are using oil because uh, well a it has to be honing oil um, but once you use oil you're never going to be able to use water because um, well the uh, the oil is going to penetrate the stone and the water is never going to be able to uh, be absorbed again into it so if you're going to go with oil you're sticking with oil all right so the first thing we are going to do is is like we're going to go on this side and what we want to do is we want to do like a rolling technique um, so rather than say with your knives where you're going um, up and back or stropping um, the way you would sharpen an, an axe is, a, is, is more of a rolling technique and you kind of work your way around down work your way down the stone and um, it's also important so this is a convex edge and um, because this is it's quite a thick little blade um, perfect for splitting and uh, kind of kindling and things and I guess that's the intention behind the reason why it's so thick here it's much thicker than you might find on say a Gransfors or a Wetterlings uh, or on a, a, a Hultifors for example um, but it's important when you're doing this a lot of people when they start sharpening and um, they're afraid of uh, you know for whatever reason ruining the edge so they're, they very much kind of stick to the tip and, and you're only getting like a very small section of this actually sharpened and what's important is actually that you're sharp you're sharpening and you're getting your your um whatever way you're choosing to, to sharpen but you're getting it on on the entire face of the axe of the cutting edge not just on the edge because if you're doing it on the edge you're just going to make it too brittle um but anyway rant over so basically all we're going to do is we're just going to be rolling like this all the way down and it's just well let's go for i don't know let's say 10 seconds on each side and um, it's important just to kind of try and keep count of things like that so first thing we're going to do is as i said we're going to roll this for 10 seconds on each side and then we'll move on to maybe a more finer stone and um, but let's let's have a go at this anyway so the same on the other side. So I'm going to go over this side because I like using my right hand. And just from that 10 seconds you can already see that this is starting to remove some material so very hard way of moving material. I think we're going to go a bit longer. I think we're going to go maybe 20 seconds on each side and then we will uh, move on to something else, I think. So. You can see there as I brush this over that you're actually there's some material there and that will be from the stone but it'll also be from the steel um, and what happens is the steel gets pushed over to the other side or the material so 
and eventually that will get finer and finer until a strop is what removes the final, what's called a burr. And we will get into that once we're stropping. But uh, 20 seconds on that side and 20 seconds on the next side. So here we go. do is I'm gonna get some tissue up here. Let's see if we can remove some of that. Okay so I think already I can feel that's actually working and I can feel like there's a very very rough working edge in that but I mean if you really wanted to you could split with that but um it has removed a lot of the chips. I don't know if you could see properly there before, but there were a lot of chips in there um, and they all seem to be pretty much gone now. Um, if there were bigger chips, let's say there were bigger chips, and it's just as ar for argument's sake, I will show you guys how to do this with a file. Um, if there were bigger chips, what I would be doing would be taking this file, putting my hand like this and then moving down the edge. I would never go backwards because that's actually going to ruin your file, um, but I would just be rolling along that there like this and again make sure that making sure that uh, you're getting the entire face and not just the very edge and um, but I won't do that too much because I don't want to actually go backwards on this um, but you know I'm just going to give this another quick lick on this because So, with the kind of rough work out of the way, I think we can move on to using the uh, scurper stones. Um, so I'm gonna go with uh, the hard black. Um, it's probably the, uh, yeah. So this hard black, it's probably the roughest of the, of the stones, but it's still not, it's not that rough at all. And um, so we're gonna put some honing oil on it. Again, just rub that in. That's probably too much oil, but look, we'll make it work. And um, might even just take a little bit of that off. Um, and we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna roll for, let's say 10 seconds on each side. So we'll just go for it here. gonna go another 10 seconds um, on each side just to make sure that we're uh, kind of taking most of the, the rough stuff off so See where we're at. So this is getting, it's getting a pretty decent working edge there already. Absolutely, I would be happy with that if I was. If that's all I had to work with, I'd be pretty good with that. I can feel the burr, and um, the burr is essentially as we were talking about there, where when you're removing material from one side, a very fine uh, amount of the steel will move over, will kind of fold itself over on the other side. And eventually what you want to be doing by moving up the sizes or grits is that burr is getting more fine and more fine until eventually your strop is enough to remove it. Okay, so let's move on to the next stone. So that was the hard black. Um, let's see, maybe the hard, 
the hard would probably be the nicest one to go on to next. I don't need to use all of these, to be honest. Um, it's not like we have to move up five grades. Um, I'm gonna just use the hard next because I think um, that's quite a nice one. Um, so this one again, it's, it's a little bit finer in grit. And I think it's gonna be nice. And then I think after this, we can probably go up, down one more size and um, and you guys, you'll get the point of it then and then we'll move on to the strop. So, let's go 20 seconds on each side. If there's areas that need particular attention, you can maybe spend a bit more time in them if you need to. Like I can see up here, there's a bit of a, a roll. And you can actually see the material that's being removed there uh, from the axe. This is actually the steel that's coming off the axe. Um, so yeah, so 20 seconds on the next side. Yeah, here we go. Alrighty, and again, you can see there some of the steel is being removed. And I'll be cleaning these off later on. It's a pr probably important that you should uh, you should clean them before you put them back in these, but I will clean them later. And um, but just for the sake of this video, it's worth mentioning. And um, so I will just clean up some of this. And I think we're getting a pretty good edge now. Um, so for the sake of this video, if I really wanted to, I could spend a lot more time on this and uh, really moving up through micro sizes and getting very, very, very sharp edge. Um, probably not necessary for something that's a basic splitting ax. It doesn't necessarily have to be hair splitting. Um, and you're more depending on the weight of the ax head to actually um, do its work and to do the splitting. But for something like a carving ax, um, which is a lot more like you might be doing push cuts and things, you want something with, with, a, with a hair popping razor edge um, you can spend more time refining that. Um, but for the sake of today, as I said, so the last one we're gonna, I'm gonna actually use is a, um, I believe this one is, yeah, the translucent stone. And um, so this is, I think, is the finest, finest stone that uh, knives and tools do, as far as I know. The surgical black is, yeah, no, I think, I think the translucent stone is the finest that they do. Um, it's also important when you're doing this that um, you don't move up uh, the sizes too quickly because um, if you miss a step and there's still a chip or a roll, you're going to have to pretty much start again, which is can be very annoying, um, but I think we're good today. So final 20 seconds on each side and then we'll move on to the strop. So here we go. So I think got a pretty good working edge there now. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, so we're gonna 
take our strop, put some Tormek paste on here, just like, I usually just dabble it around, you don't have to be too precious about it, and just rub it on. So that, that's essentially what we're left with. And then, I'm sure you guys are aware of this, but the difference between a strop and, a, and any of your other sharpening materials is that you can't go against the uh, the leather on the strop, you gotta go with the leather and the reason for that is you're removing the burr. If you go this way, you're gonna actually just cut the leather. So a strop goes with the uh, with the edge and not towards the edge. So I'm gonna go, I don't know, let's say 30 strokes each side and uh, I think we'll give it a test down on a piece of paper and see how we're looking. So 30 strokes on each side, so. gonna yeah I'm actually gonna take it out of its uh out of the vice here because I'm struggling to actually okay that's better there we go well, I'd say we're probably at seven there, so I'll do another uh, 20 or so. side. We're getting an actual mirror polish on there, which is really nice. Um, you can see there that there's a. I'll put it back in the vise. We can have a look at this edge. Oh yes, sharp. Here you can see here that the uh, all of this black is actually the material that we've removed from the axe, and um, so that is super sharp now what i'm going to do really quickly now is just on the side that i have no compound on i'm just gonna i don't know go maybe uh 10 seconds let's say on each or 10 swipes on each side so i'm really getting a nice mirror edge on there now That is looking great. I'm very happy with my own work there, I think. So we can see now that this edge is uh, is very, very sharp. Um, I would be happy with that with carving spoons. Um, I don't, I pro it's probably, to be honest, it's probably not hair popping. Um, oh, actually it is. Yeah, it's uh, it is removing hair. I will show you that there now, if I can. Um, so it is actually uh, sharp enough to pop hairs off my arm. Um, and is that, that is as sharp as you ever want an axe to be. Um, be that for, yeah, you can probably see some some gross hair there. Um, but that's essentially as sharp as you're ever gonna need an axe, be that for spoon carving um, or splitting or anything like that. 
Well, there you have it, folks. Um, no reason why your axes should now not be uh, razor sharp after all of this uh, coronavirus <laughs> goes away, hopefully, and you're, uh, you're stuck at home sharpening your tools. Um, but that's everything for me, guys. I'll be back to you guys with another video very shortly. Um, but for now, I'm going to say uh, stay safe. You can follow me on Instagram at Porikroak. Um, I'm there to take any questions or anything like that. So um, give me a follow. And in the meantime, I'll see you guys very soon. And enjoy yourselves.